to start. It's time to start our new study. I'm so excited to be with you guys tonight. I'm gonna have a little song playing kind of softly in the background called um, Lord God of Abraham by Paul Wilbur. Love it. Hey mom, hey Farron. Um, welcome everybody. So while people are jumping on, I'm gonna dive right in tonight. Hey sis, hey Pam. Welcome everybody, hey Lisa. So this song is called Lord God of Abraham by Paul Wilbur and this um, particular scripture is, um, you know what, I'm just gonna look real quick while everybody's hopping on. Uh, it's 1 Kings 18, 36. So um, this song, has that, that particular scripture has been going through my mind all day today. Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you are God. Amen? Don't we need that right now? Don't we need that right now? Oh my goodness. We need it all the time. But that's just been going through my mind today with all the mess that's going on in the world, all the way from the virus to, to what's going on right now. Let it be known, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Holy One, the mighty God of Israel, let it be known today in this world that you are God. So while other people are hopping on, we're just going to dive in and pray. All the niceties are going to go by the wayside tonight. Welcome to all of you joining the new study. Let's pray. I just feel like we need to pray. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, I come to you tonight thanking you for being the mighty God of Israel, the mighty God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the mighty God who gave his one and only son for us, so that we could be with him forever, so that our sins could be forgiven, and so that we could have authority in your name, Jesus, to have a joyful, abundant, and powerful life, to be an overcomer. Father God, thank you so much for that. And Lord, tonight we claim that promise. I claim that promise for myself. I claim that promise for every woman who is watching, every man who is watching tonight, because I know we have some uh, husbands who wanted to join in this uh, study with us and I thank you for them Lord I bless them as the spiritual leader of their homes I bless them Lord Jesus as the head of their home that you would just bless them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet remind them that they are above only and not beneath Lord Jesus that they are overcomers and mighty conquerors and warriors in your name and father I pray that every woman in here would rise to the, the, the calling of being an Ezra for their husbands and their children as we go into this study. Lord Jesus, I pray for the condition of our country right now, our world right now. Father, we just, instead of caving into fear and despair and wondering what in the world is going on, Lord Jesus, all we have to do is look to your word to see that none of these things surprise you. Lord, you are a capable God. None of these things took you by surprise. You're not wringing your hands over the situation that's happening right now, Lord God. You're still in control. You have not gotten up off of your throne. And so, Lord, let us as believers be encouraged today help us to encourage ourselves in the Lord that we know the mighty God that we serve and we do not have to live in fear we can love people we can be united with people because we're doing it through the name of Jesus so Lord I pray that you would just bless and heal our country as we come to you in your name confessing our own sins and our own faults before you Lord and humbling ourselves before you and your great name knowing that you alone can heal this country and heal this world. So Father we give you praise and honor and glory for your mighty healing name, for your name that is salvation for your name that is righteousness and goodness and faithfulness and wisdom. Thank you, Lord. And I ask that you would help me tonight as we dive into this new study, Father. Help us to be um, better prayer warriors than we were when we came into this thing, Father. Empower us through your word to cover our children and to cover our families. 
In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Ladies, thank you. Last, I keep, I'm so used to saying ladies. I'm going to have to get past that because I do know that we have some men that are joining us in this study, and I'm so excited about that. So um, let's just dive right in. Let's, let's get going in this. So I do have my newer version, Power of Praying Parent. So if you've got the older version, there may just be one or two little things that are tweaked here and there. Hey, BFF. Hey, Debbie. Hey, Melanie. Hey, guys. Um, Y'all share this and get this out and remind people that we've started tonight do that do me that favor so um, I ask you guys to start out with the introduction and the first chapter so in the updated version I love how her kids her oldest son Christopher and her daughter well somebody just called my phone one of those numbers that we don't know people y'all back with me we good Give me some hearts. Let me know that you're back with me so that I'll know. I don't know who that was that called. It was one of those numbers I don't recognize. Yay, you're back. Okay, good deal. Very, very good. Okay, so uh, her daughter, Amanda, I believe it was, they wrote um, things about their mom at different ages. So in this updated version, they've written things about their mom and knowing the prayer, uh, the power and prayer that her and, and their dad had in their life. And so they've wrote three different um updates in this introductions to this for their mom and I think that's really really cool and then of course the introduction is just how she got started writing this book and then that it led on over into the power of praying for your adult children which we are going to tap into off and on throughout this study so um if you guys would be in prayer for me tonight and help pray that the Lord would help me to focus this has been a day our, our Monday chaos has started back in now that Monday, uh, we, we got started here tonight, and so um, I'm trying, I want to stay focused, but um, I want to let you know that as I was uh, gathering my final thoughts um, after kind of a crazy day, um, the Lord met me right here in this spot, just, just, just right here to let me know that He's in control, and it was beautiful. It was a beautiful moment, so I can't wait to get started. So the very first paragraph is, it grabs you right out of the gate. I read it back when we first announced that we were going to do this study, and I, you may remember that, but let's read that first paragraph. It's the best of jobs. It's the most difficult of jobs. It can bring you the greatest joy. It can cause the greatest pain. There is nothing as fulfilling and exhilarating. There's nothing so depleting and exhausting. No area of your life can make you feel more like a success when everything's going well, and no area of your life can make you feel more like a failure. When things go wrong parenting right right and if you've been a mama for more than five minutes you know exactly what I'm talking about because it is uh, yeah it is one of the most humbling jobs out there right all right so she goes on to say um, just when we think we've got the parenting thing figured out we suddenly find ourselves in a new territory again as each new age and stage presents another set of challenges so even if your kids are in like a toddler stage and you're like oh my kids love vegetables like they like literally everything I put Brussels sprouts and broccoli and beans and all of this stuff then that'll be the toddler that you know it takes until they're four years old to potty train them you know I mean so just when you think you've got it figured out and my kid sleeps all night watch out because they'll be up for the next two weeks the minute you brag about it you know it's just be mindful that parenting is humbling so just keep your mouth shut okay <laughs> about those things and then you know you may breeze through toddlerville and you may breeze through potty training and then you know they turn five and then it's like someone exchanged your kid for someone else's kid and I'm just saying you, we've got to be careful about those things it's very humbling sometimes it says we get so tired and I agree with that sometimes we just get so tired that we just want to give up let the storm just take us where it will right I remember when the kids were younger two in diapers um, and a lot of you you got more than that you, you got way more and you got more experience in that like doorstep thing than I do but sometimes you just get so tired that there are days where you're just like, whew, I, you know, if I just drove and kept driving, everybody would be better off without me, right? Because you just, you're like, you're, you're, the ends of your nerves are frayed and you're like, no, nobody's, nobody's getting anything done around here. <laughs> but then she comes in with the next little paragraph and I love it, but I have good news. We don't have to be tossed and turned by these winds of change. Our children's lives don't ever have to be left to chance. 
praise God for that, right? Praise God for that. We don't have to pace the floor anxiously, biting our nails, gnawing our knuckles, dreading the terrible twos or torturous teens. We don't have to live in fear of what each new phase of development may bring, what dangers might be lurking behind every corner, nor do we have to be perfect parents. I thought that, that paragraph to me, and you know, I think I was a little, when I first read this book, I was so tired that a lot of it did not absorb um, the Lord allowed me to absorb what I needed in those moments. But going back and rereading re this over the last few weeks, it has, it has sunk into me in a completely different way. Like, I'm like, uh, yes, oh, yes. And that right there about fearing and dreading the terrible twos or dreading the torturous teens or whatever. I can remember when my kids were younger, people were like, oh, just wait till they're teenagers. Oh, you just wait. Mm -mm. You just wait. And I, I was filled with dread over every next new phase in my children's lives. And I was filled with this comparison um, mess. And this was before social media even existed. Well, it existed in my world. I mean, it might have existed when they were younger. I don't know. It didn't exist in my world. But we were filled with comparison, Brian and I, over what someone else's kid accomplished before ours or something that they did that our kids didn't do or ate that our kids didn't eat and I was like oh I'm a terrible parent because you know my youngest child won't eat um vegetables I'm a horrible parent you know it was that kind of thing filled with comparison and and then I was like oh my gosh everybody's saying wait until they're teenagers wait 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 and I'm like oh you know I'm all inside full of of trepidation and I can just remember thinking as I reread this that there is no perfect parent except one. There's only one perfect parent. And even that perfect parent, God our Father, okay, has only one perfect child. Think of all the children that our Father, our Heavenly Father has, and only one of them was perfect. The rest of us, we're all a hot mess. Every one of us. It says there is none righteous, no, not one. And I can remember dreading each new phase just because of hearing what other people would say or even just couldn't even enjoy the moment for comparing myself with other moms that I was just filled with such fear all the time. Fear in the moment, fear of the future, fear of what I did yesterday that was wrong, hoping I don't repeat the same mistake tomorrow and all that kind of stuff. And I can remember going... All of you know how much I love the Messianic Synagogue. This is where I got my One New Man symbol necklace I wear all the time. And I can remember listening to Rabbi Kevin preaching one time. And he said, it is not a biblical mandate that children rebel. Man, I latched onto that like it was my last breath of life. I latched onto it. And I wrote that in my Bible, and I have read that again and again and again and again and again. And no, it is not a biblical mandate that every child will rebel. However, it does say that there are none righteous, no, not one. And that means your kid. That means my kid. That means that our kids are going to mess up. Maybe they don't rebel and kick out of the traces completely, but they're going to mess up. And we've, we've all got to give ourselves and our children grace grace in parenting and grace extended to our children no matter what age they are whether you're right in the trenches of really raising them and you know they're five six eight ten twelve fifteen whatever you know two where you're just starting to have to you know like tell them no and if you're like me smack their little hand I mean, you know smacking their hands you ain't gonna kill them you know um but you, you've got to be encouraged and give grace to yourself. Give grace to your children. We're all going to mess up. And all of our parenting skills, we're all going to look back and go, man, I wish I had done that differently. All of us are going to because there's no perfect parent except one. And there's no perfect child except one. Thank God that he gave grace for all the rest of us. Praise his holy name, right? So let's go forward into parenting with that same grace. And I will, I'm just transparent as the day is long. You guys know that about me, uh, most of you that are on here. And I'll be honest with you, I'm going into this, um, into this study going, it's 
somebody else could probably do this a whole lot better. And I, I'm following in the wisdom of Stormy and Marty in here. I, I, I'm not done with parenting. My children are still here in this house under our roof and we are still guiding them. The biggest bulk of our parenting is over. Now we're in the guidance stage, um, which I think is even harder um, and, than it was before. And so what I am having to understand is that I know very little. It's like the older my kids get, the less I realize I really know. And every moment is a hold on to Jesus with everything I got kind of moment and um, yielding to the wisdom of my husband because um, he handles the boys so much better and with such um, so much more grace than I typically have in the past and so I, I'm right in here with you going whoo so y'all just know that as we go forward in this I am not leading this the Lord is <laughs> whoo, I'm, mm, okay and then she says Next, it's never too early or too late to start praying for your kids. And maybe you're maybe you're new to the whole um, Christian thing. Maybe you're new to the whole. Maybe you've just been saved. Maybe you you feel like you really haven't ever learned how to pray. And that's kind of a I say that loosely because there's no right way to pray. Um, you pray from your heart to the Lord like He's your best friend. Um, and what we're all learning to do through this is to pray using the Word of God. Um, using it back to him, praying his word back to him. But don't ever think that you don't know how to pray or so-and-so prays better than you, so I, I can't pray like that. You know, don't do that. That, that comparison game's bad. You just start praying for you your children right where you are right now and right where they are right now and I'm going to apply a lot of this back to marriage so as we go along just don't be surprised if I throw in some marriage stuff okay because it's never too early and it's never too late to pray for your children or your marriage it doesn't matter how old the child is whether they're three days old or they're 30 she said and I agree completely with that never ever ever underestimate the power of a praying parent ever Hey, Pastor Steve, love you too. Hey, Hanny, I'm so glad to see you, Pastor Steve. Okay, so um, don't ever underestimate your prayers. Like I've said before, there are no more powerful prayers on the face of the earth than that of a parent praying for their child. Whether it's a dad praying for their children or a mom praying for their children, it doesn't matter. No one on this earth can pray for your children the way you can. And it doesn't matter if they're... You, you're holding them in your arms or if they're driving off in their car <laughs> it doesn't matter or if they're driving off to, to their own home they're married and have their children your your prayers as a parent parent are the most powerful prayers ever that's that's comforting to me um, she says here that she had discovered that if we are parenting without God, we are destined to repeat the same mistakes of our past and to mimic what we've observed. Now, she was talking about how, yes, yes, if they're 50, Mom, that's right. Mm -hmm. And um, how many of us don't have a past where our parents prayed for us or we weren't raised in a godly home. Now, I was, but I know that many of you on here weren't. You weren't raised in a godly home and you didn't have that example set for you in prayer. I praise God that I I was raised in that home and I did have that example of praying parents and I'm so grateful for that. I do not take that for granted. Um, but I do know that I don't want my children to repeat the mistakes I've made in their lives. And I realize that anytime I've tried to parent my kids in my own flesh and in my own way, I fail every time. That means I'm trying to take the reins away from God. And we cannot parent without God. We just cannot. Um, I don't know about you, but I, I have definitely tried to parent in my own abilities. And those are times where I've had to fall to my knees at night, like crying out to the Lord at night for your children, where I've had to fall on my knees at night or early, early in the morning before my kids got out of bed and say, Lord, I can't, I cannot do this without you. It's too much for me. So this, the, the little paragraph where she says one day in prayer, she cried out to God, Lord, this is too much for me. I've been there. I've prayed that prayer, um, for my children and for myself because, um, I, I've parented out of anger and frustration and, um, 
just complete fatigue, you know, going blind on, on just complete and total fatigue and relying on myself and crying out to God saying, it's too much for me, you know? And then she is talking about going on worrying over your children, whether they're going to be kidnapped or molested or, um, raped or, or death or disease or whatever and you carry that burden of worry and angst all the time and I carried that too I know any mom or dad in here probably may say amen to that especially moms um, because we really overthink a lot of things um, Penny I'm sure Penny's on here I haven't seen your name Penny but I'm sure you're on here she sent me a song a little while ago that was so great and it was a choir singing a song about Lord uh, deliver me because I overthink everything. That wasn't the exact the way the words are, but I overthink everything. And I overthink so much that I basically leave the Lord out of everything, right? That was so timely, Penny. There you are. I see your name. I saw this. There's chaos on the other side of the door. Just, you know, it's Monday. That's what happens. So, um, I saw a lady walk out of Publix the other day, and she had on a t-shirt that said, hang on just a second while I overthink this. And I was like, girl, I need that t-shirt because I do that too. We all, especially, especially, especially as moms, I really believe that with all of my heart. Women overthink everything, not just parenting, but everything. So I really want that t-shirt. Hang on just a minute while I overthink this because that's me. That's all of us, right? And we carry the worry over our children, what could happen to them, in addition to the worry of how we're parenting them. And so it's chaotic for us in our minds and in our hearts. It's chaotic for us. And she said, I cannot keep a 24 hour a day, moment by moment watch over my child. Amen? Amen. Gosh, dog it. I have tried that and it just doesn't work. We cannot have peace like that. We can't. We cannot have peace because we're not surrendering to the Lord the way we need to surrender to Him. And He doesn't mean for us to carry that. It's like us picking up baggage that isn't ours and toting it around all the time. And the Lord's saying, I didn't give you that. That, that baggage wasn't for you to carry. That's mine. I, I don't carry that for you. So, man, do we do that? Okay. So, I like what she says here because there are a couple, many denominations that are um, represented here in this group. But I know a lot of us Baptist girls, this is what we do. Um, we dedicate our children to the Lord. That's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful service. It's, it, it's moving for all involved. But she says here, my husband and I had dedicated our child to God in a church service. But God wanted more than that. <laughs> you can dedicate your, your child to the Lord in a service, but it's ceremony. Where you really have to dedicate your child is on the altar of your heart. You got to do more than just dedicate them publicly. You got to do more than that. Okay? He wants you to give your child to him, your children to him, every day every day and that can be hard to do and sometimes what we fail to realize is that our children are on loan to us they came from him he loves them more than we do that's what i've had to constantly remind myself of through prayer talking back and speaking back to the lord is lord you love my babies more than i do i don't know if i'll get through this the whole thing without crying because i was already crying just finishing things up, sitting in here, you know, 15 minutes ago before we started. But he loves your children more than you do. Keep that in your mind through all of this. Um, we are to depend on God to enable us to raise our children properly, and he will see to it that our children's lives are blessed. That's something, too, that we, going back and cling, clinging to the promises of God and knowing that, Lord, you said in your word, and she's going to list out. That's the beautiful thing about Stormy and Martian's books is that she lists out scripture for you. There's a lot of freeing things in this chapter as we go along. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Um, we have to learn, and as we go through this book, I pray that we do, Lord help us, to learn to identify every concern, every fear, every worry, and every scenario that can come into our minds as overthinkers 
that we give those things in prayer to the Lord. As those things come into our mind as a worry, as a fear, as a concern, take that thought captive and turn it into a prayer. That's a prompting of the Holy Spirit. The minute you feel yourself worrying, and it isn't so much just your children, this is life in general. When you feel yourself worrying or, or given over to anxiety, and let me tell you something, I am speaking something I have not learned to achieve yet, okay? All I know is this is the truth, and it is a truth that I must apply in my own life. So I am coming to you, teaching this to you, admitting in vulnerability, telling you I have not learned this yet, but I know it's truth. The moment anxiety, fear, worry, concern, takes a hold of you, let that be a prompting to you of the Holy Spirit that you are to take that thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. And by making that thing obedient to Christ, you are saying, Lord, I bring this worry back to you. I apply your word. I've got, I have got Holy Ghost bumps from the top of my head to my toes. I bring this thing back to you, Lord, and I put it on your word. I cover this thing, and it it's covered under the blood of Jesus. Take it captive. So anytime you're worrying, just let it be a prompting of the Holy Spirit. Instead of letting the enemy take you under that wave, let the Holy Spirit ride you on top of the wave as you conquer him and speak the word of truth in your life over your children and over your situation. Amen. That was good. I don't know if anybody else got anything from that, but I sure did. Oh, my gosh. It's also, she says, and this is something hard for us to do as parents as well. Um, she says, I've also learned not to try to enforce my own will on my child in prayer. Have you ever done that? Praying your way. Like, Lord, this is what I want you to do for me. She said, this only leads to frustration and disappointment for all concerns. So I'm going to hold my thumb right here so I don't forget my place. This reminds me of when my kids were smaller. Again, I was, I was steeped in that comparison game of um, other parents had it right, other moms had it right, and I didn't. And so um, I was guided to a set of books um, called... Um, Train, train up a child. That's what it was. And um, while, I, while I agree with so much of what was said in the little set of books that I got from this particular couple, loved most of it. But what it did for me was it caused me to set standards so high that I couldn't even reach them. Like, I made all of us miserable. All of us, me, the kids, Brian, I made us all miserable because I thought we are supposed to be living like this right here. We are supposed to be raising them like this right here. We are supposed to be doing these things with them. This right here, this is what we're supposed to be doing. And when every day we failed, I only added fuel to the fire of frustration and, and just disappointment. In myself and my kids and Brian and I was making all of us miserable so be careful how you pray and be careful what you're looking around okay so be careful about those things which are the other people that you're watching and be careful what you're praying for your kids we all have an ideal image of what our kids are gonna turn out to be like or what they're gonna do or who they're gonna marry or all those kinds of things and yet we aren't really lining up our will with God's will. I love how she says this here. You know the kind of prayer I mean because we're all prone to it. God, I pray that my son will grow up and marry my best friend's daughter. You know, and then it, her parents would be great in-laws. I've done that. I have done that, y'all. And and that's not lining up with God's will. That's something that I think would be kind of cool. You know, that's not cool. Or let my daughter get accepted at this school. Well, you know what? It's not God's will for everybody to go to college. Maybe it's not, you know, little things like that. Insert whatever little parentheses you want in there, like she's saying here. But we've got to be so careful with that. And it says, of course, we may never consciously acknowledge the words that are in parentheses. We may not actually come right out and say, that would be really cool, you know, because if she got accepted to that school, that would make me look really good. Like, we don't want to say those things, but God knows our hearts. He knows the words that are coming out of our mouth before they come out. He knows these things, but they're in the back of our mind. And they're, they're the ones that are suddenly 
uh, you know, sort of inspiring us to, to impose our will on God, the way she says it, impose our will on God. That just sounds so silly coming out of your mouth, and yet we do it, don't we? Just coming out of our own mouths, that sounds so silly, and yet we do it. Then she goes on to say, prayer is acknowledging and experiencing the presence of God and inviting his presence into our lives and our circumstances. It's seeking the presence of God and releasing the power of God, which gives us the means to overcome any problem. Now, this particular, when I was reading back over this today to refresh myself after a few weeks ago, I was like, oh man. And I had to underline that because my circumstances today wasn't ideal, wasn't conducive to making this particular video a peaceful time in my mind. Because one thing right after another was happening. Dog ran out the road. I ran out, got out the gate. We have work being done downstairs and my in-laws. We got a, a walk-in tub inserted from our fixed for my mother-in-law. So that was an all-day process. We had to keep Ezra upstairs, kept her gated in. She got out one time when we tried to let her go potty. One of the guys accidentally let her out of the gate. And she took off up to the main road and Brian and Mac, it's running out. I mean, you know, that was all happening. And then we got a call of unexpected guests that were just right up the road and wanted to stop over and there was a lot and our and our water was cut off all day long so I was just barely able to get a shower before I got on here so just little things like that so when I did have a moment to settle and let my brain sort of absorb um, what we where we needed to be going tonight um, he was like invite me into all the circumstances not just what's going on in your children's lives, but you, right now, Michelle, you invite me into this circumstance. So I had to take a moment and take a deep breath and say, okay, Lord, you knew all this was going to happen today. You knew it. So I'm going to just take a deep breath and I'm going to, it's okay. It's all going to be okay. And so when we're praying for our children, <clears throat> we pray and we, we think that we're covering them in prayer. And yet when a circumstance happens, we still want to take control. He says, no, 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 invite me into that moment. That was the thing I had a hard time with with my children when they were smaller is I would pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. And then in the moment, I wouldn't ask the Lord to come in with that. I wouldn't go into my spirit and say, Lord, I need you in this moment. Nope. I just took the reins from his hands and I took off running with them. So this, I hope this study is going to help us to learn to invite his presence into our lives, but into every circumstance, every single circumstance, every single moment that we give him the reins and we invite his presence into those moments. Bible says in Matthew 18, 18, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in, in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. I love that. God gives us authority on the earth. This book, I believe with all of my heart because it's filled with the word of God, just like the power of praying wife, it helps you to be empowered in the fact that you have God's authority. You have all authority over the enemy. She says, when we take that authority, God releases power to us from heaven. Amen to that. Because it's God's power and not ours. We become the vessel through which his power flows. When we pray, we bring that power to bear upon everything we are praying about. And we allow the power of God to come and work through our powerlessness. Y'all, we don't have any power anyway. That's what we've got to keep at the forefront of our minds is in and of ourselves, apart from Jesus, we can do nothing. John 15, he says, apart from me, you can do nothing. You can't parent your child. You can't raise your child. You can't have a glorious marriage apart from me. We're powerless. So when we yield over and we bring his power to bear through prayer, through his word, on our situation, we're allowing his power to take control. Amen and amen. We're humbling ourselves before the Lord when we say this, y'all. That is so powerful. He loves for us to humble ourselves. And when we say, we need your presence, Lord, in this moment, we need your power in this moment. I can't do this without you. Man, he comes on the scene. I love that. 
Most assuredly, I say to you, from John 16, 23, most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask in the Father's, ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Now, praying in Jesus' name is not like a genie in a lamp. You can't rub it and say, in the name of Jesus, and expect it. you got to line your will up with his will, seal it with the name of Jesus, and let him do his work. Let him do his work. She says here, praying in the name of Jesus gives us authority over the enemy. The enemy is scared of the name of Jesus. He is scared of the authority of Jesus. And it proves that we have faith in God to do what his word promises, not what we want in our own will if it doesn't line up with the will of God. Hope that makes sense to you. God knows our thoughts. He knows our needs. But he responds to our prayers. He responds to that true petition of the heart. That's because she says he always gives us a choice about everything, including whether we're going to trust him as we're praying. Mm, man, oh man. So we're asking God to make his presence a part of our children's lives, our lives, and to work powerfully in their behalf. That doesn't mean that there will always be an immediate response. Mm, that is true. Sometimes it can take days, weeks, months, or even years, but our prayers are never lost or meaningless. If we are praying, something is happening. Let me say that again. If we are praying, something is happening. That's powerful. That needs to be on a t-shirt. That needs to be on my wall. That, uh-huh. If we are praying, something is happening. I love that so much. I know of many... Um, Women whose testimonies of their children, they prayed for their children for years and years and years and never gave up. And now their children are serving God in ministry. They're, they're walking powerfully as men and women of God now after many years of walking away from the Lord. So don't ever, ever, ever give up. I love the verse that she quotes from Psalm 147.3 um, from the King James Version. It says, He has blessed your children within you. So if you are carrying a child within your womb right now, just put your hands on your tummy and you say, Lord, you have blessed this child within me already. Blessed, past tense. That child is blessed right now. He is blessed and highly favored right now. Because you as his mama, you as the daddy, you are walking under the covering of Jesus and that covering applies to your children too. So you just claim that verse. I love, love, love that. We need to pray for the future of our children and we need to pray against the effects of past events. Many of us are carrying things. And when I say us, I'm, I know because there's so many of you that are on here that have carried past events over into your life and it's hard for you to release those. It's hard for you to not carry that over into your life now. So we pray for our children in the future and we pray that none of the past generational garbage will be passed on to our children in the mighty name of Jesus. It stops with us and it will not go forward to our children. Praise God. Um, pray for their future spouses. Pray for just whatever future you may be like my mom's on here. I already have my spouse. My brothers already have their spouses. They've already got grandbabies. My parents are praying now for not only my future, my safety, my protection, the same with my brothers, but they're praying for their grandchildren. Now they're great-grandchildren. Praise God. We're about to have great-grand number two coming soon. And my parents have more to pray for. The bounty is full. And so now they're praying for the, the futures of their grandchildren. And it's just, a, that's a beautiful blessing. That's a beautiful blessing blessing. And yes, Miss Linda, curses, generational bondage and curses can be broken. These are things we don't teach in church very much. People shy away from this because it doesn't make sense to them. They don't understand it. They think it's weird. It's not weird. It's biblical. And those things that affected maybe even our grandparents or our parents, we didn't even realize they struggled with. They never stopped that mess in their own lives. They never took it captive. And so now it's transgressed over into our lives and into the lives of our children, but we can stop that, okay? We can stop that through the power of prayer. Um, let's see. 
I love this. When King David was depressed over what had happened in his life and fearful about future consequences, this is from Psalm 143, he didn't just say, oh, well, whatever will be, will be. I think sometimes we, we're like, oh, oh well, this is, kids are going to be kids. I mean, boys are going to be boys. Girls are going to be girls. we got to be careful with that. He cried out to God about the past, the present, and the future of his life. He prayed about everything, and that's what we must do as well, praying about everything. She goes on down. She talks a little bit more about um, how she used to kind of gather her thoughts yearly on their vacation, their family vacation, and write out things very specific to each of her children. I've done that too through the years where I've listed specific things for each of my children. And um, <clears throat> But here's what's so beautiful to me. She quotes Psalm 25, 14, and it says, The secret of the Lord is with those who fear Him. And I love the way the NIV says it. It says, He confides in those who fear Him, who have an awe and a respect and reverence for Him, and have a beautiful, intimate relationship with Him. He confides in you. That is sweet to my soul. That is sweet to my soul. The Lord will confide in you if you are walking intimately with him and you have an awe and a reverence for him. Sometimes you can have an awe and a reverence from a distance from him. This is a, an awe and reverence and an intimacy with him. He will confide in you as you learn to grow closer to him in praying for your children. Man, that's sweet, isn't it? It's so sweet. Then she says, the battle for our children's lives is waged on our knees. Amen to that. When we don't pray, I, man, get this mental image, would you please? Get this mental image. When we don't pray for our children, it's like sitting on the sidelines and watching our children in a war zone getting shot at from every angle. Can any parent heart take that? No. That, that visual image was so good for me when I read that. I was like, yeah. Mm. And then it says, when we do pray... We're in the battle alongside them, appropriating God's power on their behalf. Does that make you think of an Ezer? We are appropriating, we are surrounding, we are protecting, we are walking around them in prayer. We are alongside them in the battle. If we also declare the word of God in our prayers, then we will wield a powerful weapon against which no enemy can prevail. Amen and amen. God's word is living and it is powerful and it is sharper than any two-edged sword and it pierces everything it touches. So think about that. Every time you are speaking the word of God in prayer back to him, it is piercing everything you touch on. Everything that you're praying for your marriage, for your children, for your life, whatever it is you're coming to him about, Everything that you bring the Word of God to, the Word of God is piercing that thing in the spirit realm. Oh, that's good. Visual images really, really help. This is like getting to see the, the little story played out on the felt board. You see it. I mean, an image. Get an image in your mind in the spirit of what this looks like. So when you're coming to the Lord in prayer for your children, whatever the situation may be, I don't care what it is, name it. From toddler on up to grown, look at it in the spirit and realize that the, the word of the Lord, it's a sword. It's the sword of the Lord and it is piercing every situation that you apply it to. Gosh, I love that. Man, I love that. It says here, God's word will not return to him void. Isaiah 55, 11. You throw God's word out there, it is going to accomplish what he sets it to accomplish. Praise his holy name. Go ahead and just write that down. Claim that as a promise, Lord. When I put your word out there, it will not return void. It may take a while before I see it, but you're working. If I'm praying, something's happening. Amen. Hallelujah to that. When you're praying for your child, include an appropriate scripture verse in your prayer. If you don't know them, she's given you plenty of resources here. Plenty of resources, all right? Don't let the fact that you don't know a lot of verses yet already, don't let that stop you. Use this as the resource that it is meant 
to be. She says, as you're reading the word during your own devotional time, as you pray for your children with the Holy Spirit's leading, you'll find more scriptures to include because there's some that she may not even list here. You can just go through the word of God and read it and apply that to your children's lives, apply it to your marriage, apply it to yourself. And you will find that you've got this huge arsenal. And she says, and you don't have to have a different verse for each prayer. That was so freeing to me. Can I tell you how the enemy has used that particular thing in my life? Because I'll claim a verse and I'll rephrase it and restate it, not rephrase it, restate it over and over and over again in certain situations in my kids' lives, my marriage, whatever. And it's like the enemy saying, can't you come up with anything new? Don't you know any more of God's word than that? Don't you think you ought to be learning a little bit more than that and applying that in prayer instead of that same old verse again and again and again? And I'm thinking, oh, maybe I should. Maybe I, do, maybe I don't have enough of God's word applied to my heart. And then I start to fret instead of praying in power. Oh, y'all. Oh, my goodness. This is the, mm, how the enemy takes and twists even our time in prayer with the Lord. He takes and tries to twist it in our minds. She said, you may have one or two verses that you use repeatedly during a specific season of intercession for your child. That's okay. That is okay. Don't let the enemy twist things. Don't let him do that to you. When we employ God's word in prayer, we are laying hold of the promises he gives us and appropriating them into the lives of our children. Through his word, God guides us he speaks to us and reminds us he is faithful. Some people say, I just never hear the Lord speaking. I don't know. I just don't know how to hear the Lord speaking in my life. If you want to hear the Lord speaking in your life, open his word. Open his word. He'll speak to you. I promise he will. In that way, he will build your faith. He builds your faith in your heart and he enables you to understand his heart. Y'all, I've seen this play out in my life so many times. This helps us to pray boldly in faith, knowing exactly what is his truth, what is his will, and what is our authority. What is our authority? I love that. I'm going to have to speed this thing up. This, the introduction, the first night, is always a little longer, y'all. So It says we can resist the enemy. Get, Wait, what I just said he did to me. We can resist the enemy more effectively if we pray to God according to his directions found in Scripture and if we understand the power and authority that is given to us through Christ. I love what she says here. If we watch him, keep our eyes on him, if we walk with him, that's intimacy. If we wait on him, that's trusting. If we worship him, that's our weapon and we live in his word, that's our sword, we will win this battle for our children. <clears throat> Man, I love that so much. Whenever you pray for your child, do it as if you are interceding for his or her life because it's exactly what you're doing. I love that. Remember that while God has a perfect plan for your children's lives, Satan has a plan for them too. That's hard to visualize when your children are smaller. Um, that's very hard to visualize. I remember, and I'm going to try to speed this up, y'all. We, we, I don't know if we'll break it. I don't know. Y'all just hang with me. If you got to go, you got to go. Just hang with me. Um, when Mac was smaller, um, we were at a, a particular homeschool co-op, and he, he dealt with a lot of frustration meltdowns back then. Now, if we had been in public school, a, a teacher probably would have suggested that he be on some kind of medication because of the meltdowns and you know all this stuff and I didn't want to do that to my child so I, I'm thankful the Lord called our individual family to homeschool because it helped me through some things that I probably would have caved into otherwise through um, the school system so I'm not gonna go into all that uh, that's just the choice that the Lord had for our family that was his will for our family so I can remember um, the particular teacher that he had. She was so precious and so spirit-filled and just so kind. And she called me one day because she knew that I was dealing with these little meltdowns. And it was causing frustration in me. And I was having my own little meltdowns too. And I wasn't dealing with it very well. And I can remember her calling me one day. And she, she spoke God's word over me. And she said, Michelle, remember 
that the enemy always comes after the firstborn. I was like, whoa. And she said, but not only the firstborn, he, the enemy has a plan for every one of our children. And we can be fearful of that or we can follow God's plan for our children. And I was like, whoa, like that, that was like this huge moment for me. And I will never forget it as long as I live. When your children are small, you have the hardest time visualizing that the enemy's out to get them, even at that age. He is out to get your babies, okay? And you might have one that you're still changing their diaper and you're still giving them a bottle every few hours, but the enemy has a plan for that baby. What we want to do is get on board with what God's plans are and start defeating the enemy's plans right now. Right now, wherever you are and wherever your kids are. But his plans will not be able to successfully succeed in any of these things because they've been dissipated in prayer. Hallelujah. The Bible says, how can one, listen to this, how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man. Now that's from Matthew 29, 29. That's always been a hard verse for me to get my brain around. So here's how she puts it. In other words, we can't have any effect in the devil's territory unless we take dominion over him and forbid him any authority there. Thus, we can also forbid him access to our children's lives. Yes, 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 100% yes to what she just said here. But let's turn that around and look at it this way. How can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man? The enemy will come into our home and try to bind us. Hey, hey, we have all strength and all power and all authority in the Lord. The only way the enemy can get into our house, and he's done it with all of us. You know this. He's done it with all of us is he has come in and he has bound us up with his lies. And he's plundered our houses because we have allowed him to come in and bind us with his lie. And we don't remember the authority we have. So we need to bust out of those bonds and we need to take authority over him, take back our house. Amen? Take back your house. And sometimes, and I've said this before, I said it in The Power of Praying Wife, Walk through your house, literally, with your mouth open and claim your home for the kingdom of God, that the blood of Jesus covers your home. The enemy has no authority. Walk through your children's rooms. Walk through the hallway. Walk through the living room. Walk where you, you eat and sleep and do life and tell the enemy he's got to get out. Do it. Open. Open your mouth and tell him he's got to get out. Now, what I have begun to realize in this season of life for my children is this is my time in parenting to shut up and pray. I think I said this a few times in kind of leading up to this this study is that um, you know in my kids lives I have always um, I've been the main one. I've been with them 24 hours a day seven days a week. I, I just have since they were a little bitty and I've had full control over their lives up until the last few years Everything they did, every friend they had, every TV show they watched, every you know night they went, time they went to bed, all that kind of stuff. I was in control. Brian was working. Now we're going into this new phase. Thank God, Brian's just retired from one job. We only have the one full-time job, so he's here a little bit more. And this new phase of parenting and guiding our children, it, it's a challenge for me. It's a time for me to okay, I'm handing over this the reins now, uh, Dad. It's your turn. And learning to shut up and pray in this area of my life is really, really hard. It's really, really hard for me. So this is the time of life that I'm learning to do this. Um, and binding Satan's plans, what it looks like in me right now is shut up and pray and bind it in the spirit world instead of trying to bind it through disciplining my children. <laughs> it's it's a whole new, um, whole new world for me. Um, and I'm learning as I go. So... Let's continue on. Um, she says here, pouring out our hearts. This is from Lamentations 2.19. Pour out your heart like water before the face of the Lord. Lift your hands toward him for the life of your young children. How much clearer can it be that we are to pray with fervency and passion for our children and look forward to those prayers being answered? He wouldn't tell us to do it if he didn't mean to answer the prayers. Now, 
She does talk about the fact of waiting on prayers to be answered can be very difficult. Um, this is where I wanted to insert a little thing about marriage before we try to wrap this thing up as quickly as we can, is that she talks about how sometimes when we don't see the answers to our prayers, we give up. Um, sometimes in spite of all we've done for our families, our marriages, our children, um, and all the prayers that we have for them, bad choices continue to be made. Um, things just don't seem to be changing. And those times are hard for us in a marriage and they're hard for us in, in raising our children. Um, but if those kinds of things continue to happen, don't berate yourself and please don't stop praying. I know some people gave up on the power of praying wife thing because they just didn't see the changes that they wanted to see. I want to encourage you, if you were in that one and you're now in this one, I want to encourage you, start praying for your marriage again. Don't give up. As you're praying for your kids, throw your marriage right in there with all these promises and believe that the Lord will change things in his perfect time. Don't take the reins away from him. Don't take the control away from him. Keep the communication lines open. This says with your child and with your husband, your spouse, your wife, if you're on here and you're a man. Continue interceding for them and declaring God's word over them. Never give up. Never, never, never give up. She says, stand strong and say, I've only begun to fight. Sometimes you're so weary, you're going, I'm done. I have no fight left in me whatsoever. She says, declare right now, I've only begun to fight. Man, I like that. Keeping in mind that your part of the fight is to pray. <laughs> God actually fights the battle. Remember, too, that your fight is not with your child. Your enemy is not your child. If anybody hearkens back to the power of praying wife, your enemy is not your husband. It's not your child either. The enemy is your enemy, not your kid. The enemy is your enemy, not your husband. So stand strong in prayer until you see a breakthrough in your marriage and in your life of your in the lives of your children um david says this in psalm 18 verse 37 through 39 i have pursued my enemies and overtaken them neither did i turn back again till they were destroyed don't turn back don't turn back on your marriage don't don't turn back on praying for your children don't do that until the enemy has been completely destroyed he says i have wounded them so that they could not rise Mm, yes, they have fallen under my feet for you have armed me with strength for the battle. You don't have the strength within yourself. When we start to rely on strength within ourselves, that's when we want to give up. That's when we want to say, I'm too tired. I can't do this. Nope, you absolutely can't. You are powerless. Just like we talked about earlier, you are powerless. But he arms you with strength for the battle. The battle to pray for your marriage, the battle to pray for your husband, your wife, the battle to pray for your children. Amen. All right. Then she goes on to talk about there is no perfect parent and it's not about being a perfect parent that makes a difference in a child's life. It's about being a praying parent that makes a difference. And I love that she includes this because we said this from the beginning that maybe you don't even have to be a parent. You can be a friend, a teacher, a grandparent, an aunt, a cousin, a neighbor, a guardian, or even a stranger with a heart of compassion or a concern for a child. The child may be someone we hear of or read about in the newspaper. The child may even be an adult for whom we have a mother or father's heart for. So even if you don't have kids, there are people that you can be praying for. There's children that can be influenced by your prayers. She says this, repeating the prayers in this book as often as you like. Just do that. God didn't say, don't come to me over and over with the same request. He never said that. That was so freeing for me. In fact, he said to keep on praying, but don't make empty petitions in your prayers. We don't want to just come to our, our, to our time in prayer and say, Lord, bless my kids and keep them safe for this day. Bless my husband and let him have a good day. Those are empty. Those are empty. When we pray in our own strength, it's empty. When we pray according to his word, there's power. There's power. All right, we're going to end this up by praying this prayer. And we're going to read the weapons of warfare that she lists, okay? Love this so much. Lord, I submit myself to you. Now, pause. Let me say this real quick. 
in the power of praying parent it was really hard for me to read a prayer that someone else wrote I felt so disingenuous but because I was so desperate and because I really knew that I didn't know how to pray for my marriage in the right way I said Lord I'm, I'm please take these words as mine please know that this is my heart and I prayed those prayers that I read that someone else had wrote so don't feel disingenuous if you're in a place where you just don't know how to pray this is a great resource this is Holy Spirit inspired God allowed this to be to be edited published and in your hands right now okay so don't don't think that it's disingenuous to pray these prayers Lord, I submit myself to you. I realize that parenting a child in the way you would have me to is beyond my human abilities. I know I need you to help me. I want to partner with you and partake of your gifts of wisdom, discernment, revelation, and guidance. I also need your strength and patience along with a generous portion of your love flowing through me. Amen. Teach me how to love the way you love. Where I need to be healed, delivered, changed, matured, or made whole, I invite you to do that in me. Help me to walk in righteousness and integrity before you. Teach me your ways. Enable me to obey your commandments and do only what is pleasing in your sight. May the spirit or the beauty of your spirit, listen to this, be so evident in me that I am a godly role model. How about say this? May the beauty of your spirit be so evident in me that I will be a godly wife. Interjecting right here. There is no greater gift besides praying for them, that you can give to your children than to love their mom or their dad. So if you're the mom on here, there's no greater gift you can give to your child than to love their dad. If you're a dad, there's no greater gift that you can give to your children than to love and cherish their mom. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. Give me the communication, teaching, and nurturing skills that I must have. Make me the parent you want me to be and teach me how to pray and truly intercede for the life of this child. Lord, you said in your word, whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. In Jesus' name, I ask that you will increase my faith to believe for all the things you've put on my heart to pray for concerning this child. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's read these beautiful weapons of warfare. John 15, 16. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain, that wherever you ask, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. Proverbs 20 and verse 7. The righteous man walks in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. That verse was used in the power of praying wife. Yes, it was. John 14, 13 and 14. Whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Ephesians 6, 4. Do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. That one was one the Lord used with me over and over again. Ephesians 6, 17 and 18. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Y'all, I hope that you're excited about this. I hope that this empowers you and strengthens you in your spirit to be excited to pray for your children, to pray for your marriage again, to pray for your life in general that the Lord will give you that power and prayer through his word I love you guys so much I pray that you have a beautiful and blessed night in Jesus name we'll see you on the pop tomorrow morning and I'll see you back here next Monday night chapter 2 I love you so much have a beautiful night night